Good morning students. Happy to see you again. Before starting our class, I would like to recall the lesson what we are dealing with. We have studied in the previous class about the lesson force and pressure. So here, what are the topics we dealt in the previous lesson? The, sorry, in the previous class is nothing but force, the SA unit of force and the factors that force depends on with the examples. The next topic we dealt is trust as well as the pressure and what happens if you increase the pressure and with the examples we explained and also the SA unit for pressure. And the next topic we studied is pressure exerted by air is nothing but atmospheric pressure and we study the SA unit for that as well as the instrument used for that. Now we are going to learn in this session an important topic is nothing but the force and pressure exerted by liquids. Just see me, I have a pencil in my hand. If I drop this pencil down, what happens? It will fall straight to the ground. So you can say a force is exerted by the earth. So what kind of force is exerted by the earth? I can hear your answers. The answer is the gravitational force. If I drop this pencil or a wood piece in the bowl of water, what happens? Here also your force is exerted, the gravitational force is there, but it floats on the surface of the liquid. So what makes it to float on the surface of the liquid? So here a liquid exerts a force, that is nothing but an upward force is exerted by the liquid, is called as the buoyant force or we call the upward force or otherwise it is called as uptrust. I repeat again, the upward force exerted by the liquids which decides whether a substance will sink or float. That is called as buoyant force and this phenomenon is called buoyancy. I hope you can understand. So this force is not only exerted by liquids but also by gases. So liquids and gases together called as fluids. So I repeat again what is buoyant force? The upward force which is exerted by the liquid is called as buoyant force and this phenomenon is called buoyancy. We are experiencing this force when we play with ball or balloon in the pool, in the swimming pool or in the water place wherever. You try to push the inflated balloon inside the water, what happens? It, you feel like something is pulling up, that is sorry, the pushing up the balloon. So that force which is exerted is called as buoyant force. I hope you can understand what is buoyant force. So now the next we are going to le learn is nothing but pressure exerted by liquids. We know that the liquids do not have definite shape, they take the shape of the container. If you pour the water in a bottle, it takes the shape of the bottle. So here a force acting on unit area of a surface on which the liquid is placed is called static pressure. There is also an ex a pressure is exerted that is nothing but the static pressure. So here this pressure does not depends upon only on the content, only on the base but also on the side walls. So I repeat again, the force acting on unit area of surface on which the liquid is placed is called static pressure. This force or this pressure is exerted, not only exerted on the, on the base of the container but also on the side walls of the container. So it depends upon the depth of the container where we observe. So the pressure depends upon the depth of the container. Coming to this, so how we will measure this liquid pressure? What is the instrument we use to measure? As we use barometer to measure the atmospheric pressure, for the liquid pressure we use an instrument called manometer. So what is manometer? How the manometer will be? So the manometer is nothing but it is a glass vessel having two limbs okay, and we can see a scale is placed in between to measure the difference. And here you can see it is closed and you can see a balloon is fixed to it. You pour water or any liquid inside the limb, so without any pressure, just leave it, it will be in the same column, the level will be the same. 
when you press here it gives a pressure and makes this level to increase so the liquid pressure can be calculated on the height of the liquid which it moves so we can say that pressure exerted by liquid on the base of the container depends on the height of the liquid column so we are dealing with the pressure exerted by liquids and we studied about what is static pressure and what is the instrument used to measure pressure is nothing but the name of the instrument is manometer it's a very simple uh, apparatus having the two u tube u limb that is the shape will be u shape having two limbs and it it have a scale in between to measure the uh, height of the liquids when you apply pressure so here the pressure exerted by liquid on the base of the container depends on the height of the liquid column i hope you can understand so now we are going to see the next one is liquid exerts same pressure in all direction at a given depth for example you take a bottle or any vessel or a plastic bottle you take it you just punch three holes on the same on the sides at the same height from the contain from the base it should be in the same height now you fill the bottle with water and you can see the water will starts to rushes out with the same pressure and falls on the ground at the same distance so here we can say liquid exerts same pressure in all direction so here it is in the same uh, height from the base that is the distance is same and we can see the falling water also will be in the same distance the pressure will be equal so i, I hope you can understand this concept what i said the next one the liquid pressure varies with depth we studied this concept in the previous classes in our lower classes that you, as you take an empty bottle you just punch three holes on the same side of the bottle but at different heights from the base and now you fill this vessel or bottle with water what happens you can see the water rushes out from the topmost hole and falls near to the vessel the distance will be minimum whereas the water flows near the base where the hole is there near the base will rushes out with a very in a very force with a very great force and falls to a maximum distance so it shows this the pressure at the at the base will be more comparing at the top so that's why we can say that why the dams are built stronger and broader so that to withstand this liquid pressure so i repeat again liquid pressure varies with depth so here at the depth the liquid pressure will be more where comparing to the top so here this part when i come to this experiment i can say liquid exerts same pressure in all directions at a given depth i have explained with an experiment that you can go through in your book that is in the activity part so so we have studied about what is pressure sorry the force exerted by pressure that is nothing but the bion force and the pressure exerted by the liquids we studied about the static pressure and how this pressure varies on the surface of the liquids next we are going to deal with the other topic is nothing but pascal's law you just take a notes what i have written on the board it will be easy for your for your revision part now we are going to deal with pascal's law we have heard already this name pascal so where we heard pascal is a unit of pressure which is named after a great scientist called blaise pascal who did so many experiments in this fluid mechanism so now this place uh, pascal's law says that when you apply force just take a rubber ball you fill this rubber ball with water and you just give make tiny holes at any place on the ball and you just give a press over the ball what happens the water starts to rushes out with the same force that is the pressure is transmitted 
equally that is equally distributed that is called as pascal's law so the the pressure exerted by the liquids at rest in the closed circuit is equally distributed through the surface of the liquid that is called pascal's law i repeat again the pressure applied at any point of the liquid at rest in a closed system is equally distributed throughout the liquid so i hope you can understand what is pascal law so i i repeat again with an experiment this is also given in your book in the activity you can have a look of that just you take a ball fill the take a rubber ball fill it with water after that you just give a pierce here and there you squeeze the ball what happens the water starts to rushes out with the same force from all the holes so that is the, that is the thing he said that it is equally distributed all, in all sides throughout the surface of the ball that's the thing this pascal law so we are using this pascal law based on this pascal law in our everyday life we are using uh, this applications so what are where it is used uh we can you we can see in the automobile uh, station service stations to lift the vehicles the hydraulic lift is used so hydraulic lift is nothing but you just have an imagination there is a cylinder and you have a a platform over that uh, a vehicle is placed let me have a vehicle is placed and here we have another piston and this is filled with fluids this is filled with uh, liquids when you press here what happens automatically the the here it will starts to lift up this is the basic concept for the hydraulic lift so when you give a press here the pressure applied on the liquids will make this piston to move up that is when you press here this will starts to move up so this is the concept behind the hydraulic lift the same way the hydraulic brake system that is it is used in the automobiles based on this pascal's law only and the next example we can say the hydraulic press which is used to compress the bundle of cotton or cloth so that it occupy very less space so we studied about what is pascal law with an with an experiment with an example and experiment also where we use this pascal law that is the application of pascal law it is used in the hydraulic lift as i said it's a very simple one it is used in big big uh, uh, vehicles also like uh, hydraulic to lift the things from the ground we are using this hydraulic lifts so now we are going to see about the next topic is nothing but properties of liquids we have some properties of liquids let me see what is that properties of liquids they are we can say as surface tension and the other property is viscosity have you ever uh, think why the rain drops falls down makes a spherical shape always you can see when you drop something the liquids it forms a spherical shape it does not take any other shape do you know why so because of this surface tension i can say that each and every molecules we know that the liquids are made up of molecules not only liquids we say the word matter matter is made up of atoms and molecules so we can say that solid liquid gas or comes under matter we can say just here listen here the molecules in the in the liquid will be like this we have studied in our lower classes will be in the lower classes so each and every molecules will exert a force will experiences a force so that that is an inward force is experiences i hope you can understand so towards this it makes a uh, and make it compressed it make it compressed and this molecules make a spherical shape 
so i can explain this one so surface tension is a property of liquid the molecules of the liquid experiences an inward force which contracts the surface area as possible to save the minimum place that is minimum value i hope you can understand so the surface tension is nothing but the amount of force acting per unit length on the liquid surface is called as surface tension that's why whenever we see the liquid drops or in this form like a liquid drops when it falls down so it forms a spherical shape because the molecules will start to contract that is pull inwards and makes a place compatible and avoid the to spreading of surface area will be less that's why it forms a spherical shape so we can see when you drop anything uh, just an example you take a bowl or a glass vessel fill it with water and you just pay place a tissue paper over it over that you keep a pin a needle or a pin or any other thing so here you can see after some time this tissue paper will starts to sink inside whereas this a uh, pin or anything that is the uh, needle what he using will float for some time if you touch that it will fall down so what makes it to float there because in the top the molecules will will be closely arranged and makes a, as a skin like a skin it will be protects and it will be making to float for some time when you touch that it will get inside so this happens because of the surface tension here i hope you can understand so now we studied about the surface tension and we studied we are going to learn where these surface tensions are we can see the the tall trees even at the top the leaves are green how the from the earth the water is rushing up to the uh, top of the tree we can say because of the surface tension that is the upward pulling because of the surface tension you know that the roots absorb water and it and the uh, vessel that is the xylem which is present this is the how we have the blood vessels like that in the plants also they have the vessels that is which able to pass the liquids throughout throughout the content that is called a xylem which makes pulls the water up because of this surface tension the another example i can say that water strider insect you can see well some insect can able to float on the water for some time that is they won't get sink they can able to stand on the water surface so because of this surface tension here the layer of the water acts like a exist an cohesive force that is the elasticity will be there that is it can able to feel the elasticity that it can able to see and after some time it will when you touch it will get inside so because of this surface tension and during a heavy storm sailors pour soap or powder into the sea near their ship to decrease the surface tension of sea water this process reduces the impact of violent water current against that all of ships so now next we are going to see the other one property is nothing but viscosity so what is viscosity i can explain with the water you just take a sheet or a plate or any other thing any metal things or any plastic things you just have a drop of water and drop of honey you just slide down slightly what happens you can see the water will flow very fast whereas this honey drops will move very slowly so what is this means as i said there is a force exerted by the molecules that is intermolecular forces the bonding energy will be there so that resists the water the molecules to move very fast so what is viscosity if i say very clearly the ability of liquid to flow to resist flow is called viscosity that is it resists the flow that is called as viscosity here i can say water have low viscosity because it flows very freely whereas when you pour ghee or honey or syrup it has the highest viscosity so that it very it flows very slowly the unit of viscosity is poise in 
CGS. We have studied what CGS in the measurement lesson. And in SI unit, it is mentioned as Newton second per meter in SI unit. So, I hope you can understand what is viscosity. Viscosity is nothing but the ability of a liquid to resist to flow. The ability of flow to resist of the liquid is called as viscosity. And we studied about with, with an example and also about the SI unit of viscosity. So now we shall we recall what are the topics we studied now. So we are dealing with the lesson force and pressure and today we are dealing with the topic the pressure and the force exerted by liquids and we studied about what is force exerted by the liquid is nothing but the bion force. I forgot to say about the bion force that is as I said the bion force is an uptrust force. You just listen here. It's a upward force exerted by the liquid. So here as I said when you drop a wooden piece or a wooden piece and an iron nail which will sink which will float. You can say very clearly that wooden piece will float whereas iron nail will sink. Why? What is the what makes to sink? Because here it depends upon the weight of an object. I forgot to say this point so I am just saying again. Weight of the body. Here the iron piece have greater weight that is if the weight is more than the upward force exerted by liquid then it will what happens the weight it will sink vice versa if the weight is less than the upward force it will float. So here the weight de uh, uh, decides whether the body will sink or force it depends upon the, the upward force depends upon uh, that is the body will sink or float depends upon the upward force exerted as well as the uh, weight of an object. So I again I repeat again what is Bion's force? Bion's force is nothing but the upward force exerted by the liquids it decides whether an object will sink or float here it depends upon the weight of an object if the bion force is greater than the weight the object will float if it is less than the weight then it will sink so now coming to the next topic we studied about the exerts that is the pressure exerted by fluids that is liquids that is nothing but the static pressure and in that we studied with so many examples and it is the liquid pressure is, me, is measured by an apparatus called as manometer and here we studied about the manometer also the pressure exerted by liquid in the base of the container depends on height of the liquid column. The next we ex with the experiment that is liquid exerts same pressure in all directions at the given depth at the same depth it will exert the same pressure that is the thing we have explained with an ex experiment also. Coming to the third one liquid pressure varies with the depth here you can see the experiment that we have did uh, the at the base the force will be more the pressure the liquid pressure will be more than the top that is why the bridges that is uh, the dams are constructed in a stronger and broader at the base than the top so that to withstand the liquid pressure. As I said the liquid pressure will be more at the base comparing to the top. The next topic we studied is nothing but the properties of liquids sorry uh, before that we have learned with the Pascal's law. So we know that the Pascal is a person who uh, made so many experiments for this fluid mechanism. So he said that at any point you give a pressure the liquid uh, pressure that is the force will be same it will be transmitted all the directions will be the same that is the concept he said based on that Pascal law uh, uh, so many things we are using in our day to day life that is hydraulic lift where it is used in the automobile service station and 
hydraulic brake system in the automobiles as well as the hydraulic press which able to compress the bundle of cloth or uh, cotton to to make the space uh, small next topic we dealt with properties of liquids is nothing but surface tension and viscosity in this surface tension i said why the drops always the water droplets forms a spherical shape because of the force exerted the inward force exerted by the molecules it contracts and makes a spherical shape so here what is uh, 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 liquid uh, sorry what is surface tension is nothing but the amount of force acting per unit length on the liquid of the surface is called as surface tension and i explained it is there already in the activity you can have a look in that book the next um, properties is nothing but viscosity that is the ability of a liquid to resist the flow is called as viscosity i explained with water as well as with the uh, honey we said the water will flow very fast so that it have low viscosity whereas honey will will move very slowly because it has high viscosity so the unit for uh, viscosity is poise in cgs and newton second per meter in si unit i hope you can understand the lesson thank you